continue on from part one. Sorry, I had to calculate the gas mileage. Um, so, if I were to fill it up with 80, or E85, which most cars, or most people out here in Utah do that because of how cheap gas is, and they don't feel like the concept of putting 91 in your car is, like, good for it and helps it, you know, get better gas mileage and stuff. So, uh, yeah, people don't do that out here in Utah. Back where I'm from, they don't do it either. But, um, even with the same concept with the motorcycle, like an older motorcycle, you always want to put 91 in it. Any motorcycle, you want to put 91 in it. But anyways, I calculated it for the 380 a gallon right now for 91. It'd be $87 to fill up my Jeep. See, it's only five bucks more. Five bucks. You cannot be that freaking lazy to reach in your pocket and grab an extra five dollars from your pocket just to put a tank of 91 in your car. That's dumb. My neighbor Trudy, she did it with her Cavalier. She averaged like 33 miles to the gallon. And we were going down the freeway constantly every two weeks with her son Bo. So we were always going down the freeway. We'd always fill it up. And for a four kicker, that thing like to drink. <laughs> but uh, we averaged every month or so. I got to drive it a little bit. Average about 33 miles to the gallon. So that's pretty cool. But my Jeep, I know averages since I'm going to be getting the 96 Jeep Grand Cherokee Limited with a 5.2 liter V8, which I find for 1300 all day long. Um, and out here, if up in the mountains, if I'm even going to go up in the mountains, which is probably not going to be anywhere close because the mountains are like tw no, 10 miles away from me but if I'm going up towards the mountains a little bit more it gets pretty bad um, but yeah so I'm choosing the full time four wheel drive because of first of all I need it second of all it gets better traction during the winter Third of all, it's a big freaking V8. <laughs> and I've always been a fan of the Dodge 318. And fourth of all, with me, I, I do kind of have a lead foot. But, like, not, like, so really bad. Like, I'll give, um, I'll give a Jeep, like, 2,500 to 3,000 RPMs. That's normal driving. But if I'm trying to get out of someone's way, I'll put my foot down on the floor. Not like in regular driving on that freeway, I will. But other than that, you know, it doesn't, you know, count that as aggressive driving, which it's not. And, uh, yeah. People always do it on the freeway. I see people weaving in and out of traffic. I saw a guy in a Pontiac Grand Am when I was driving with my neighbor Trudy up to take her son up to his dad's house just weaving in and out of traffic and almost hit us and thank god he didn't because I didn't want to get in an accident <laughs> no one wants to get in an accident it's a proven fact but anyways so rule of thumb to any person who owns a car 96 and newer or older put 91 in your car oh, um, about every three months or six months or so depending on when you feel like it and depending on if you have money um i would stick in a tank of fuel injection cleaner i would check your air filter i would check your oil make sure that's good not every six but every three for your oil um don't check your spark plugs if you just replaced them like you know, 
And if you're getting 200 to 250,000 miles on a tank of gas in a Jeep V8, then something's totally wrong with your Jeep. Unless you have modded it, put a lift kit on it, put bigger tires on it. Which I think is totally pointless, because I'm never going to be taking my Jeep off-road. But, uh... Yeah, if you, if you have done that, then yeah, you're going to be getting bad gas mileage no matter what. But if you keep your car completely stock, which it's worth more stock than modded, um, then you'll get more resale value out of it. And if you take good care of it, it'll be good resale value after you do it. And if you uh, keep the receipts, put them in your glove box always for your oil change. Your oil change sticker has to be up on the dash. Or not up on the dash, up on the windshield. Um, and for all the people out there, I think Jiffy Lube really is a good place to take your car. It's not. Don't take your car to Jiffy Lube. I learned, well, my mechanic teacher learned that the hard way. A student brought in his car, took it to Jiffy Lube. Um, Jiffy Lube forgot to pull oil back in his car. Drove it down the road, started knocking real bad. He pulled over, shut off the engine, and uh, they uh, what they do is they take the oil, the drain plug for the oil. They take it and put it in an impact and drill it back into your oil pan. First of all, that's bad, and you're only supposed to tighten it with a ratchet, not a impact. If you tighten it with an impact, you risk stripping it um, you risk doing harm to the car that you're working on you risk hurting the person's engine you risk a lot more than putting it on with a ratchet and you always want to do it in finger tight you never want to freaking like take an impact to it you never 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 want to do that there, there's no way I've never done that to my cars that I've worked on personally when I was in the auto shop in high school. Never done it. But I did take tires off with an impact, which you're supposed to, duh. And I have put them on with an impact. It's because we had the little torque things where you would take your little torque specification. And I would say 75 foot pounds. I grabbed a 75 foot pound little thing you stick on the end of the impact and you stick that on there you stick your thing on there your little socket and then you drill the tires back on and be very 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 careful and make sure you do screw them on finger tight before you do anything and always do it in the start pattern if you don't do it in the start pattern then you risk either not getting even tension on your wheel or when you take it down the freeway, it'll have a shimmy in the wheel. A really bad shimmy. Um, or you'll uh, just risk having the tire fall off. Which is not good. So that means you'd have to replace the studs or the whole wheel bearing. And the wheel bearings aren't cheap. And that's another thing you want to look out for a car too. Wheel bearings. You hear a lot of noise. And especially with Jeeps, I've heard the back wheel cylinder bearings or whatever right in there, they're bad. They usually go bad after like 150000 But if you don't hear any noise, then they're fine. Um, and if you buy a car with bad tires, then you're, yeah, you're, mm, just don't buy it. <laughs> Personally, me, the person who last owned it has to maintain it, has to put good tires on it in the last year or so because tires last more than a year if they don't you have a serious problem with jeeps if you uh if you're driving along and you have like this much play in the wheel while you're driving it you need an alignment so yeah if you just driving along and it just has a lot of play in the wheel before you can turn it like if it has like 50 percent play one way 50 percent play the other way yeah, you definitely need an alignment, which is not good because probably when your tie rods are just about to go or your ball joints, 
So that's what I look for in a Jeep. If you're going down the road and it feels like we have to keep the wheel kind of moving a lot or pulling to the left or pulling to the right or when you go around a turn and you steer it lock the lock like Eric the car guy <clears throat> and you hear a lot of um, you hear a little bit of hopping from a Jeep that has high well that has 150,000 miles. Um, that could lead to problems if they're hopping, but if it's a full-time four-wheel drive, then it should hop. Personally, that's what I know. Um, don't quote me on that, though. But if you're, uh, going around a turn and it's hopping in two-wheel drive, that means you either your four-wheel drive stuck in place, or you have lockers. <laughs> and you didn't know you had lockers. So if you're going around a turn... And you didn't notice you have lockers and it kind of hops while you're going around the turn. Yeah. Either you have problems or you have lockers. Like Detroit lockers or something like that. But, uh, yeah. that's You know what? That's all I'm going to say tonight, guys. But, uh, yeah. If you guys have any questions about, like, Jeeps. Because I'm not a real big Jeep fan. But I do love Jeeps. I don't know quite a lot about them. But I know enough to give you guys some advice. So if you're looking to buy a Jeep, um, make sure it does not have any wheel play. Check the tires. Um, check that it hasn't been in an accident, like Carfax it. And uh, make sure it does have insurance on it while you're driving it. Because if you don't have insurance and you get pulled over, that's a $1,200 fine out here in Utah. Or it could be more in your state. So if you guys have any questions... Um, you guys can give me an email, um, on my email, on Facebook, you can email me. I'm, uh, usually good with replying back. If I don't reply back, I'm sorry. It might take me a couple of days. I'm in college right now, so, well, not college right now, but I'm in college in spring. But if you have any more questions, please let me know. I don't know if I would know the exact answer because I'm not experienced in Jeeps, but if you guys do have any questions about Jeeps, well, please let me know. Or uh, my friend Eric, the car guy, he knows about Jeeps. Dave's Farm, or uh, yeah, David's Farm lives. He knows about Jeeps. I'm sure a lot of people know about Jeeps. Just search it up. But yeah, if you guys do have any questions, please let me know. Um, and like, comment, and subscribe, and sorry if this was a boring video to you guys, but I just wanted to tell you what kind of vehicle I was getting and everything, so comment, rate, and subscribe. My username is down there, um, and the subscribe button's up there, so please hit that subscribe button as soon as possible, and uh, I hope to see you guys soon, and uh, I'll be taking a video of my Jeep probably about the end of December. And there will be an upcoming unboxing of a Samsung Galaxy S2. So uh, this is Travis Wade, Watermere Rocks 0258, out.